section that there is a raise your hand tool. Um, and so as we try to orient ourselves with the room, I'd really love to see um, how many folks are seniors or starting their senior year of high school quickly using that raise your hand function. Awesome, and, and how many juniors? All right, and any parents joining us? Okay, <laughs> nice. Uh, well, that's great to see. Um, oh, maybe Maria's folks are joining her. Um, and then quickly, how many of you have been in contact at some point in time with a coach or hope um, to potentially play sports in college? There we go. That's everyone in the room. Well, that's a good thing um, that you're joining us tonight. And thank you for, for humoring me with that. Um, but I am joined by uh, three colleagues um, who will be helping anchor the presentation tonight. So I'm going to let them introduce themselves and then we can get started uh, with the Q&A function of, of the chat tonight. So, uh, Mikhail, you wanna kick us off? Sure thing. Um, thanks everybody for joining us this evening. I'm Mikkel Barnes, I'm the head softball coach at Bates College. I have been at Bates for seven years now. Um, I had an awesome journey that, that brought me to Bates. I'm from Maine originally, born and bred, and love the state, so uh, I'll put that disclaimer out there, but, um, Went to college in Maine to the University of Maine Farmington and played soccer and softball there. Got my degree in secondary education uh, mathematics and I was a high school math teacher for three years while I was an assistant coach at our rival Bowdoin College. Um, so got my foot in the door coaching there and uh, three years into it, uh, Bates opened up and I have, uh, I think the best job on the planet at the best school on the planet and couldn't be more thrilled to be here. So thank you all for joining me and uh, the rest of us this evening. Awesome, thank you, Peter. Yeah, my name is Peter Casares. I'm the uh, swimming and diving head coach. This is year 14 for me. Um, and um, my path to Bates um, started out with um, swimming at Gettysburg College, loving the experience and my coach, um, then heading off to graduate school, um, getting a sports psych degree and an assistant coaching um, experience, then going to Kenyon College, Wabash College, and then ending up at Bates um, and uh, thrilled to land that dream job um, early on in the career. So that's, that's me and uh, welcome everybody. We're excited you're here. Awesome, and from the student perspective, Mary. Hi everyone, thank you for joining tonight. Really excited um, to talk about sports here at Bates. Um, my name is Mary Collette, I'm a senior at Bates and I'm originally from Watertown, Connecticut. Um, I spent four years at a boarding school down there and I played three sports in high school, but um, my dream was to play in college and um, got started with the recruiting process. Um, and just really enjoyed talking to coach. Um, also, I play for uh, Coach Barnes in the chat. I'm, I'm also on the softball team. And um, I really fell in love with Bates from the first visit on campus. And um, I've fallen in love with the state of Maine. So I've been here for two summers as well. Um, can't leave. So I love it here. Um, and athletics is just such a huge part of my life. And I'm happy, happy to answer any questions that you guys have. Awesome. Well, thank you to the three of you for joining us. Uh, I know it's 7 p.m. on a weeknight um, and Zoom fatigue can be real nowadays. So, uh, and also for the students, uh, again, thank you for joining us. We know your school years may be looking a lot different nowadays. So we are grateful that you're joining us. And it looks like right out of the gate, we got some questions initially. Um, but before we jump into those, I would really love, um, I made Mikkel introduce herself first. So maybe Peter, you wanna take this first question. I just would love for folks, uh, if you could maybe give an introduction of the NESCAC and Division Three Athletics. We get questions on the road all the time. Can I get an athletic scholarship? What is that all about? So maybe can you just explain D3 Athletics and then the NESCAC Conference for folks to help them orient? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm a huge believer in Division Three Athletics. I think it is, especially in the NESCAC Conference, it's Division One sports with uh, the top tier academics side by side. So you're getting great coaching, great competition, and um, a phenomenal 
um, education and we're trying to have them work together as opposed to picking one over the, over the other. So, you know, I see, I see us as avoiding that zero sum game where you have to be good in one area and have something else suffer. And then, you know, end up at zero, like you're just going to be good in both by the time you leave. And I really love that. And I love that people do it for the right reasons um, and for the love of the sport. So, you know, division three does not offer a athletic scholarships. Um, it is the NESCAC that we are a part of, which is the most um, competitive athletic conference in the country in terms of depth and talent. Um, and so you are seeing tremendous competition in every athletic venue um, and competing against the best. And if you're good in the NESCAC, you're a national level athlete and you're usually heading off to nationals too. So it offers you um, a great experience, a chance to compete against the best and then compete at the highest level, um, both in the classroom and on the field or in the pool. Awesome. Thank you, Peter. Um, and then, uh, Mikkel, we had one student asking about kind of academic su support and how you support student athletes to make sure that they're, they are finding that balance. Can you talk about how maybe you structure it for, for your team and making sure that they get the academic support that is needed to ensure that there's success in the classroom and on the field as well? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, we are very lucky at Bates to have a myriad of options across the board for academic support. We have the ARC, um, which is the Academic Resource Center, um, which is just at times personalized one-on-one -on -one support. Um, I know that the advisor, advisors for our students um, are often, I think, with our student to professor ratio being 10 to one, very small, they are able to build really strong relationships with their academic advisors. Um, for our team specifically, we, and, and as most teams on our campus, we have an academic um, faculty liaison. Uh, she is an environmental science professor. She's in our dugout for every home game. Uh, she has us over for dinner um, in our first week of practice, and uh, we couldn't be luckier to have uh, that kind of support. And she helps bridge that gap a little bit. She's a little bit of a liaison between the students and, and professors and just helps with the communication process if, if we have to um, miss class because of games. She's just a really good person that we are able to uh, bounce some things off of and, and she's one of our biggest supporters. Um, in addition to some of those resources, we have a, uh, a math tutoring center. Um, you know, we, we really strive like Coach Peter said, Coach Casares, uh, to have that strength and that support in both um, athletics as well as academics. And uh, I'll say this, very proud, but our team GPA last year uh, was, was over a 3.6, which is pretty phenomenal. And um, it's, it's sports and studies do mix well. That's one of our, our team uh, mottos and we try to find a way to collaborate and make sure that it's across the board for everybody. I like that the team GPA came into play. Uh, always proud of their teams, their squads. Um, Mary, do you want to talk maybe about from the student perspective? I think for athletes that I talk to on the road, we're looking at Bates. They, they, they are their worst critics a lot of times. They're nervous that they won't be able to do it, but they've been high achieving students. They've played sports for so long. Um, can you talk how, about how you transitioned to college at Bates and, and how you were able to find balance? Yeah, so I am a neuroscience major and I came into Bates um, pretty set on that major or something in the biological sciences. Um, but I didn't think it was going to be easy um, and it's not easy. Um, but you learn as you go. If you make that one mistake, um, not doing enough work before you leave for your game the next day or not budgeting your time properly, those mistakes kind of you learn for them from them very very quickly um, and coming from a pretty academically rigorous high school um, and having like my entire extra extracurricular time filled with sports most of the year um, I came in with a little bit of knowledge um, how to how to budget my time a little bit better um, at the college level um, obviously there's less structure um, you're not having a study hall uh, you're not having uh, teachers trying to 
um, get you to do work exactly on the same time, same day, but you do have deadlines that you have to meet. And your teammates are always, my teammates are always like supportive of that. And we always um, make times to go study together and have a quiet time, a quiet place to work, either in uh, Peagill or some other academic building, um, especially if there's a game the next day or late practice or we're in season, we're practicing for two and a half hours a day. Um, it has been a challenge, like it's not going to be easy, but it's the Bates Athletic Department is there for you every step of the way and our resources are just so, so great and um, I couldn't ask for anything more to help me achieve like my academic um, goals. Awesome. <laughs> great answer. Uh, I'm going to have you come on the road with me for admissions. Um, well, we're doing it virtually, so this is easy. But um, so I don't know for either of you coaches if you have a lot of two season athletes. Um, but I think one question we get a lot is about the opportunities to study abroad, which you know what Bates on a normal year studying abroad is a big part of the Bates life. So for either of you, do you want to talk about I, I don't know if you have two sport athletes, but how easy is it potentially for students to study abroad? And, and how would you kind of mention that? I know coach Peter raised his hand, so I'll throw it to him. I mean, I could I can speak a little bit to this because we have a sport in the winter that goes over both semesters. So we'll start with their training. Um, they're getting in shape in October, then the season starts in November and it ends in March at nationals. So our athletes have to consider how they're going to do that if they're going to go abroad. Um, and so that's a little bit like a two sport athlete. And we've had some that have done um, rowing and swimming in the past. Um, but it's, it's just one of those things that, and in my program, and I can't speak for every coach, but I do believe that we are kind of cut from the same cloth is that if it's important to you, you have to, you have to go abroad and do it. And then we have to figure out a way to continue to make you better as an athlete, knowing that that's going to happen. So we're going to help you while you're abroad, get in shape, stay fit, do what you need to do. Um, and when, when you come back, you, you have to earn your spot if it's starting time or, or getting into a meet or whatever, but you're going to be welcomed back and you're going to get coached up and you're going to, you're going to have your opportunities to excel. Um, and we're going to try to get you back. And if not, you know, to where you were better. Um, and that's our goal. We're solution oriented here at Bates. We want you to do it all, even if it's hard. Um, and it's not easy to make choices like that. So welcome to the real world because they're coming and it's a great chance to go after it and learn from it. Just like Mary said. Awesome. Mikkel, anything to add there? No, I, I think being for us in, in the, the spring, we don't have that uh, first semester overlap. I, we have had two sport athletes before um, who have participated in a fall sport in addition to softball in the spring, um, but we've never had an athlete who's a two sport athlete, at least for, in our program, study abroad. I think Peter's uh, example of that overlap from first semester to second semester for swimming would be the best, you know, his best answer. And Mary, you haven't studied abroad, have you? I have not, no. Uh, well, I will tell you as a former student who went abroad, I don't know if anyone, if either of the coaches did when they were in school, I want you to compete. I was an athlete as well, but study abroad is great if you can do it. I did three and a half months in Vienna, Austria, three months gallivanting across Europe and learning is not something that typically falls on your lap uh, when you start in that real world as uh, Coach Peter alluded to. So anyways, I'll leave it there. We do have some more questions though, which is great. So thank you for sending them our way and keep them coming. Um, so uh, Katie has a question, I think for both coaches again, Mary, I promise we're gonna get one for you. Uh, but for both the coaches, Recruiting in the era of COVID-19, obviously, as folks um, are trying to, to keep their health front and center, can you talk a little bit about what recruiting has looked like for you, Mikkel? Yeah, this has certainly been an unorthodox uh, recruiting experience, certainly for student athletes, but definitely for us coaches as well. Uh, where the NESCAC is implemented, similar to the Division I rule, where there's um, no recruiting in person. That's on campus, that's off campus camps, so on and so forth, uh, we have really had to rely on um, video. And fortunately, uh, we're able to use Athletes Go Live. Um, I can watch live games, but um, in addition to that, they, they keep the highlights up there. And so uh, that's really important for me to go back. And I, and I can't tell you how many times, not only have I watched it live, but I've gone back to look over those highlights multiple times for, for student athletes who were uh, very interested in. 
Um, so it's been, it's been a curveball. Here's another softball pun. Um, but it has been, um, you have to adjust, you have to pivot. This is what we're in. And so you figure it out. And like coach Kassar said, we're a solution based, like you just got to work with what is given to you and, um, trust your gut, uh, both as student athletes, but as coaches as well. And, and I'd say this, um, now more than ever, um, take that leap of faith, uh, understand that as coaches, we're doing the same. Um, we're not able to see you in person. And so our evaluation process uh, is much different. So we have to take these leaps of faith by uh, trusting our gut and trying to evaluate as best we can with some four minute highlight videos. Um, but it is what it is and that's okay. And that's gonna make us uh, hopefully better evaluators. And, and that's what we're all about. Yeah, I can, um, I mean, I, 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 get, I agree with what Mikhail is saying. We're looking at a lot of videos. We're looking at a lot of numbers on paper. Um, and we're looking for great matches academically and athletically every way we can. The recruiting process for um, high school seniors this year has been unique too. I mean, it's, it's about doing Zooms. It's about meeting the team and the coaches over FaceTime, over Zooms, over any type of virtual setting. Um, and so we're doing a lot of that. And so I would encourage you as, um, as people that want to get recruited or, or play sports in college to, to reach out to your coaches, email them and see if you can meet some people on the team and the coaching staff and if they'll set that up for you. Um, and then once you get to do that, you know, maybe there's another step where you meet more of the team or they do something, you get online, you do the virtual tours and, and you get really smart and savvy and then you hit their Instagram page and, and anything you can to, to get a feel for them. And then I would say like, man, your generation is amazing. You guys understand how to cut through all the baloney and, and really see what things are authentic and real. And you can trust your gut when you see that team and that coach and you make that connection, even if it's over Zoom instead of in person in their office. If you feel it, um, it's, it's there and um, you can trust yourself on that. And so don't get too nervous about making a decision. Like, like Mikkel said, it's gonna be okay. Um, and you're going to get there and you're going to find a great school. And if you choose Bates, you're going to be surrounded by amazing people that are there to support you for four years. Awesome. Well, Mary, I've got two questions that I'm going to combine for you on this one. Um, and it really just relates to kind of what your life looks like kind of in season. And so two folks are asking one, how much time do you typically spend on the road and how do you balance that with your classes? And then really more specifically, what does a typical day look like for you in season? Yeah, so um, we are in the softball, uh, the sports softball and the NESCAC, it's split into east and west. So we're traveling to Tufts, Bowdoin, um, Colby, and Trinity. So that's a pretty, that's a pretty big sp spread when you get, have to go all the way to Trinity, um, play a game on a Friday night, and then play two games on a Saturday. Um, I mean, I live in Connecticut, like it's a four hour, it's a four hour drive. Um, it, it takes up a chunk of time during the season. It's, it's a little bit of traveling, um, but the, the Bowdoin and Colby games um, are very much like we play one game on Friday and then either two games on Saturday or um, two games there on Saturday. But um, it's most of the non-conference games are gonna be played in the state of Maine. And I really like the traveling balance during the season. Um, I think that like, because the NESCAC is so competitive, being like having to travel like a little bit farther to Connecticut, say Connecticut or to Medford, to Tufts. Um, I think it's, I think it's a really rewarding like season being able to play these great teams, even though it does, um, you do have to plan your, your academic life a little bit around it. Um, but we are really good. Our team is very, very good with like, communicating with our professors at the beginning of a semester and telling them, hi, professor so-and-so, like, um, I'm, I'm Mary, I'm on the softball team, and we play a 36-game season in the span of eight weeks, six to eight weeks. Um, so we, um, we travel a lot, and these are the classes I will be missing. Um, how, could I, how could I make up the work? How could I um, keep up with my classmates in this class? And I've found that the traveling is just, I really don't think it's too much of a, too much of an issue um, with keeping up with everything. 
um, for the next question um, going through a day during the season. Um, but off season is a little bit different because, uh, well, I, I'm kind of going back to what pre COVID days were. So hopefully by the time you all get here to Bates, it's going to be, it's going to be back to the schedule is going to be back to back to normal. Um, but on a typical day, I would have um, either two or th three classes during the day starting um, either either 8 a.m. or something, but we would go right to practice. As soon as we get out of class in the afternoon, we have like a two and a half, two, two hour to two and a half hour block for practice in the afternoons. Probably um, every, every non like non game day during the preseason um, period. Pretty intensive. Um, it's, it's like, I would say like you get really tired at night and then you have to go back to do your homework, but um, there's times throughout the day. <laughs> times throughout the day where uh, either we're lifting or we're doing individual work, batting, um, that's sprinkled around during the week, either twice or three times a week during the season. Outside of the season, it's gonna be more like seven or eight times a week doing individual or small group work, plus a team practice or two or three team practices a week. Um, but a day during the season is a lot more, I would say it's a lot more intensive, a lot more rigid and organized than it would be out of season because there's that standard like 4.30 to 6.30 time period that's just blocked off for softball. And I, I really like the scheduling of it. I really like enjoy being able to like put everything in my Google calendar and like say, this is what I have for today. Um, I think it's, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty, uh, pretty easy to fall into the routine and, you know, but get better at it. <laughs> Either one of you, if you want to add, go ahead. I'm going to jump in just for a, a hot second here. Um, softball is unique. They have a lot of games in a small amount of time. And um, I, I would say for those out there that aren't thinking softball, you do have a lot of the sports that have their games on Saturdays. Um, and so there isn't a lot of class time missed for the majority of sports or their late night games um, after classes are done. Um, so you don't have to worry about it too much in terms of missed class times and travel. Um, and I, I would say that um, we all get that your priority is academics here. And so as Mary alluded to, even if it's crazy and you've got makeup games because snow dates and rainouts and this and that, the coaches and the professors are working closely to make sure that you are getting the work done and that you're not stressed and, and freaking out that it's doable. Um, and we get that as a coaching staff here at Bates that we're, like we said earlier, we're trying to help you do both. So know that there's a lot of options out there and it will get busy and it will be hard, but you'll be supported. And there's a, there's a way to do it if you manage your time well. Awesome. So I, a very specific question. I don't know if I've had this one before. Uh, so for either coaches, does the NESCAT conference have regulations regarding travel rosters? I'll, I'll field this one and, and maybe Coach Casares can jump in afterwards. Um, for us, we've always had a roster size that has been under the, uh, I, I think you'd have to more, um, there's a NCAA championship roster maximum uh, that you're allowed to travel with a certain number. And I, and I honestly, I don't know the number off the top of my head because we've, we've always been under that. Um, softball, generally speaking, you're, you're talking a roster size of, of 16, maybe 22. Um, our roster size is 18. So um, we're kind of right in the middle there. So we've never had to worry about that. And I don't know if swimming's a little bit different. Yeah, I don't believe the NESCAC has um, specific roster sizes that they mandate any team to to be under I think you have to talk to the coach and talk to them about would I would I be on your travel roster or not um, if their sport is that way and Mikel might say yeah you're on it because we're never we're never over it and I might say yeah there's 52 seats on the bus and I'm going to bring 24 women and 24 men and even if we have 30 on the team that's all I can fit with the coaching staff and so you know sometimes you've got to you got to just talk to the coach and figure out what, what they're capable of traveling. Um, and then, yeah, we do have for, for a sport like swimming, we do have uh, 24 athletes that are allowed to go to the conference meet and that will be the one time there is an actual roster 
um, cap. And that might just be for championships. But I think each kind of team and each coach has their own philosophy and you should just chat with them. Awesome. Um, Mary, quick question for you. Um, knowing you have a, a spring sport, um, the student was asking, as a spring athlete, are you able to take more challenging classes in the fall to help with time management in the spring? I don't know if this is a strategy you've employed, but um, specific question. Yeah, so Bates, uh, to be a full-time student at Bates, you can either take, um, it, you have to take at least three classes, classes and it, uh, three credits. And at most, I want to say 5.5 .5 credits, and that 0 0.5 is a, is a lab. Um, so you have, as a senior, um, I am pretty much done with my major requirements. I'm finishing up one or two of my minor and GEC requirements, but I find that I actually think I do my work more efficiently and with, I don't know, I, I just think I do my work better in like during the season because um, like I sit down to do my work to be able to play softball and to be able to do it without having to think about other things. Um, but if that is something that you are um, struggling with and kind of not looking forward to doing work during the season, doing a lot of um, class work, then you could definitely budget your um, classes. Um, you can pick there's like a November date where you pick classes for the second semester. Um, but you can definitely see what your schedule is going to be like um, and take maybe like a 200 or a 100 level class um, and maybe cap at three classes. Or um, if you're feeling adventurous, you can take four, five classes in a lab. <laughs> that's, that's a lot, but um, definitely you can figure out your class schedule. That's what you, that's where your major advisor comes in or your minor, minor advisor comes in and they advise you. You say, hi, I'm Mary, I'm a softball player. Like I want to be able to take these classes um, out of season so I could, you know, focus on them better without the, without sports in the way. And your, the, your advisor will say, okay, here's what the department is offering. Um, here's your options. Do they fit in your schedule of your classes? Be, uh, of your classes that you've already signed up for. Um, and they work really well. You, you, I work so well with my major advisor and he's been so helpful with um, trying to make sure that like I can get all my requirements in in, a, in an effective way. Um, and because he understands like my, my professor, my advisor like rode at University of Washington. So he like understands the life of a student athlete so it, it, that's where academics and athletics definitely blends is trying to, you know, set up a schedule that works for you for classes. Awesome. And then I know, Mikkel, you already threw out your team GPA, but we did have one student who was asking about just general statistics, I think, about of your team as far as GPA, graduation rate, or maybe retention. Um, I don't know if either of you know this off the top of your head. I know you're both pretty competitive people, so you might. Um, but you want to talk maybe a little bit about your teams? Sure. Uh, we have right now, since I've been at Bates, a 100% uh, graduation rate. Uh, so that's a pretty easy figure to remember. I like that 100. Um, currently, most, much of our team actually are science majors, much of our upperclassmen. Uh, but many of them actually came in undeclared. And that is something that's pretty common. You don't have to declare until March of your sophomore year. So you're able to explore a lot of different options. Um, you know, get your feet wet in, in something that may interest you um, or you find out that it may not interest you. Uh, and so that I think having that flexibility is really awesome. So our team GPA being as, as great as it is, I think last year we had um, four all-American scholar athletes, um, which at the time our roster size was 16. So that was 25% of our uh, team there, which was pretty incredible. Um, what else was included with that? Was it just retention rate, GPA? Um, we try to, our team goal GPA is try to be above a like 3-3, which is pretty advantageous. 
Um, we have support systems in place. Uh, there's a, a program at Bates that allows professors to kind of flag when a student uh, maybe does poorly on an exam and it, it, it actually sends myself and, and um, some other academic support people uh, a message about, hey, this person did poorly on a test. Um, here are some ways that they can make up for it. And so um, it's just kind of that safety net. And, uh, and so we're always kept in the loop. Obviously, we would hope that our student athletes come to us first and, and fill us in. But um, there's always, um, uh, you know, different methods in place to ensure that our students and our student athletes are, are being as successful as possible. Really understanding that academics and athletics are not mutually exclusive. Um, let's have a, a collaborative approach and, and make sure that uh, we're, we're successful in all facets. Yeah, I'll just uh, piggyback on that. I think last year we had um, Bates student athletes with a GPA either exactly the same or slightly higher than the, than the rest of the student body. So that's a great demonstration of what we're doing athletically in terms of um, academic importance. And then every year there's a NCAA um, student athlete day um, that division three puts on and um, our college has traditionally kind of boasted about what GPAs each team is posting and who the top tens are and which ones are scholar athletes and scholar this and honor roll this and honor roll that. So if you go onto the Bates website and Google, um, Division three scholar our student athlete day, Bates College, you'll see um, uh, an article that was written about the last one that we did. And you can get some great stats on what a typical student athlete is doing at Bates College in terms of um, success in the classroom. But yeah, retention rates are off the charts. Graduation rates are too. It's what we do. We want people to enjoy four years and we'll get out of here and, and go get, a, get, a, get their next stage going in graduate school. Um, or in her career. So it's good. Awesome. Well, thank you. It looks like I, the last question actually is coming my way. Um, what are you looking for in a student athlete in terms of admissions um, from Anonymous? Uh, well, for folks to know, I mean, from an admissions perspective, we're looking holistically at everything that a student brings to the table. So whether that is they are an accomplished musician or they are an incredible swimmer or you know, they can hit that softball out of the park. Um, we're looking at the entire picture. So you know, it's not just the fact that you're a student athlete. You know, how were you able to be a leader within your community? How does your community view you? Um, how have you done academically over the course of your four years in high school? Were you able to push yourself, continue to improve in rigor? Um, but we review you within the context of the school and the environment that you're a part of over the course of four years. Um, and so I think it's important to mention that we are in a time unlike any that I can certainly remember. Um, and so that your application might look different this year than what your classmates a year ago uh, might have been a part of. So I think now more than ever, it'll be important to tell your whole story in your extracurriculars, what you're a part of. Um, you know, we certainly understand that if you have not really been able to leave your home, that your ability to get engaged might be severely limited. Um, and that's not something that we're looking to hold against you. Um, an effort for programs even like this one is hopefully to help you understand that, that there are humans behind this process with your best interest in mind, um, trying to help you, trying to help you navigate this um, because we all wanna set you up for success in whatever way that might be. So um, from an admissions perspective, be authentic, be sincere. Don't tell us what you think we wanna hear, but be true to who you are and what you've ultimately accomplished over the course of your four years and take your time. Um, your application should not be something that you do on November 14th to submit it on November 15th. Um, take your time, put a lot of effort into it, um, and then reach out. Um, from our perspective as the admissions side of things, um, all of our admissions team is broken down on based where you would, uh, have attended high school. So if you are from California, but you attended school in the state of Connecticut, I would be your personal admissions representative. So please go to our website and find your admissions rep, and you can certainly reach out to us and ask, ask questions. And if you Google Bates Athletics, you can find contact information for every sport, their coaching staff, fill out the recruiting questionnaires. So I know the website some, sometimes seems like an antiquated resource, but it is an incredible piece um, that can give you a lot of information to these questions. But um, with an eye on time, I uh, just want to give students one last opportunity. If there's any final questions that you want to throw our way, now is a great opportunity to throw some final questions in there. And then I'm going to throw 
we'll go with the softball pun again. A softball to everyone. Uh, favorite part about Bates? That has been my go-to, so I'm sticking with it. Um, and Mary, as the student, I'm going to let you go first. What's your favorite part about Bates? So um, I think the normal student would say like the food <laughs> because we're so high ranked food food wise. Um, it's so good in COVID too. I, it's very good. Like the grab and go is the same that it would it would be. It's it's amazing, and you get to eat it in the comfort of your own home. Um, but um, honestly, if if we weren't if there wasn't as many restrictions right now back like the past three years, my favorite part of Bates would be just like the people that are here um, and I, it sounds cliche but like the people that I'm close to like my teammates are my sisters basically and um, like they're just so supportive in everything that I do and I like want to give it back as much as possible and like that mutual relationship is just so important um, and it just like makes everyone's life so much better. Awesome. Peter McCall, who, who would like to go next? <laughs> I'll, I'll jump in. I was going to say the food. So thanks, Mary. Um, uh, all seriousness, though, um, I think it's the wow moment. Like, I think st students at Bates are challenged and it's hard. And it's like that moment when they touch the wall after – a, gru a grueling season of hard work and dedication and sacrifice and the time on the board makes their jaw drop, drop open and just like look in amazement. I didn't know I could do that. Their teammates are going bonkers, but it was this culmination of consistent hard work over time that led to that moment. And that's hard. And I think as athletes, we really get that and we're patient at times and we can do that. And I love that that exists at Bates College, not just in athletics, but in academics also, because our seniors, there's that wow moment for them when they did something they never thought they could do. And they hand in that thesis at the end of their four years and they, and their teammate or their best friend binds it for them. And everybody in the, the library is proud of them and they can't believe that they finished this thing. And I just think that moment is hard to get nowadays because everything is plowed and made easy for you to succeed. Like we want you to succeed. We'll do whatever we can. We'll support you. We'll do all this, but sometimes it's tough. And I love that Bates keeps it real like that. And it's going to be hard, but you're going to have that moment. And that is my favorite thing about Bates is every student gets that wow moment, something they're super proud of. Gosh, I have to follow up that, huh? Um, <laughs> you know, exactly what Coach Kasarish just said, um, the wow moment, and, and I'm trying to find a, a, another uh, – term for it but it truly is that that you see your student athletes work so hard um, in everything that they're trying to accomplish and at times we have to pull them in and say hey guys you're you're spreading yourselves way too thin trying to dip your toes into everything um, on campus and because I think innately uh, the type of humans that we have at Bates and that we have in our programs um, want to do as much as they can. And so sometimes we got to reel them in a little bit, but that's all right. Um, so they, you know, to watch them when they come in and their first year and they sit across from me and they're wiggling in the chair, they're nervous, they're not making eye contact. Um, and then to see them when they leave Bates and to see how well they've developed and into this adult who I know can shoulder whatever comes their way. And um, they have passion, they can communicate, they're respectful, they challenge me, and I hope I challenge them throughout those four years. Um, for me, that's, that's the most fulfilling is to see how incredible our student athletes are in everything that they juggle. And then when they hit a walk off home run against Trinity and, and we, uh, we take the series um, and, and make it into playoffs um, to see the best of both worlds and to see them operate at their highest, but also at times at their lowest um, and being able to be there to support that and then figure out how do we get to the other side together. And, and so when, um, for me, my, my wow moment is, is to see them 
and I hate to say it, it's bittersweet, but to leave Bates and to see what they do afterwards and how we continue those relationships. In fact, I, I was just um, talking with our, our last two seniors who graduated last year and, and asking them what they were doing. And um, I'm at currently writing uh, a recommendation for a Fulbright uh, scholarship, um, which that's, that's unbelievable. And certainly was out of the realm of my experience as a student athlete. I was never um, going to be one of those people. And so to be a part of that for other people's experience who, who are so unbelievable is just my favorite part about Bates. Well, I cannot think of a better way to end than that. I will just say as a native Lewiston resident, uh, born and raised here in Lewiston, I am just proud that all of you uh, are a part of an institution like Bates and that I, my career has brought me, uh, brought me here and worked at such an incredible college. So i uh, grateful for all three of you. I know it's almost eight o'clock. Uh, I won't say it's past your bedtime, but it's nearly past mine. Um, so thank you to the three panelists for joining us, for the students. Um, don't let the conversation end today. Please keep everyone in the loop, whether it's admissions, athletics, ask a student page. Um, please feel free to continue to reach out. And obviously, first and foremost, we are wishing you and your families well um, during this trying time. And from a Bates perspective, if we can help, certainly don't hesitate to reach out. So best of luck um, and have a wonderful evening. And I'll just ask the panelists, hang tight for a sec. Um, and for folks, if you want to leave the room, feel free to, to head on out and have a great evening. Take care.